Proudly we hail. City where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, Test Drop, and this is the story of a young airman's two lives and how he came to terms with both of them, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just one moment, but first, if you're an ex-serviceman experienced in a critical skill needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then you're in luck. The Career Incentive Act opens up new opportunities in the Air Force to veterans of all the armed forces. If you possess one of the skills the Air Force needs, you may qualify for the United States Air Force and in a gray that'll be a real pleasant surprise. You see, right now, the Air Force needs men skilled in many important fields. So put your service-earned experience to work to your best advantage as a member of the United States Air Force team. Make the credit you've earned toward a comfortable retirement pay off. For complete details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the special prior serviceman's folder. Now remember, that's called the special Prior Serviceman's Folder. See what a return to the service as an airman can mean to you. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now the first act curtain of the proudly we hail production, Test Drop. <laughs> There's something about the sound of a C-124 in flight. Four huge engines working in powerful harmony to carry 185,000 pounds through the air. Uh, it's like music in my ears. And today especially, there's a sort of restrained excitement in the sound because within a few minutes, the eyes of 50,000 people gathered below in a baseball stadium will be on us. Uh, it's a good feeling to be up here be part of a great and powerful team. But it takes work to become such a team. Not only the kind you do with your muscles or your brain. Uh, sometimes it takes a different kind of work. And now as I look out there into the clear sky, waiting for the jets, I can't help remembering. It was about two years ago. Hey, uh, Sergeant Roper, where do you want to put this crate? What's the number? 2789. Uh, wait till I check my loading list. Sergeant, there's two B-36 engines coming on hey, next. Yeah, I know, I know. Just hold your horses. As I remember, that was a hectic day. I'm loadmaster of this C-124. 7th Troop Carrier Squadron Tactical Air Command. And I was supervising the loading of 35,000 pounds of cargo. Normally, no trouble. But that day, Plenty. Because my assistant loadmaster had been transferred out and I had to be on top of everything myself. Sarge, do you want to use the nose ramp on these drums or the forklift? Now just hold it a second, will you? I've got to... Uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, what is it? Um, are you Sergeant Roper? I am. I'm Airman Second Class Stewart. The first sergeant told me to report to you here. What for? Well, he said I'd be your assistant loadmaster and flight attendant. Oh, well, this is good news. You couldn't have come at a better time. Hey, you men on the loading crew, take five. Yeah, I'll take five. All right, sit down, Stuart. I'll fill you in. Oh, thanks. When'd you get in? Uh, just about an hour ago. You better down okay? Yeah, the first sergeant hooked me over to the barracks. Good. Now, you won't be seeing much of your room for a while, though. I won't? Well, about five hours, we'll be taking off for Upper Hayford, England. It'll be the initial flight of Operation Redhead. And uh, don't ask me why they call it Redhead. Well, I won't, sergeant, but... What's it all about? 
Well, it's a resupply test to see if we can airlift all the supplies to England that are needed to operate a SAC bombing unit. And from the looks of this load, they need plenty. Yeah, yeah, sure does look like it. Well, all in all, it'll take a few round trips at least. So that's why I say you won't be seeing much of your quarters here for a while. Oh, I don't mind that. This will be something new to me, and I, uh... What? No! No. Tell me slow and gentle. How do you mean, no? Well, it's my first time on a regular assignment, but don't worry. I've been through the passenger and freight traffic school and all through the actual thing. I'm, I'm sure I can make that step all right, Sergeant Roper. Yeah, well, I hope so. Luggage and flight lunches aboard, Sergeant Roper? Yes, sir, Major Williams. Loading is complete. Fine. As soon as we go through our checklist, we'll take off. Yes, sir. A few hours later, we were over the Atlantic, headed for our first stop in the Azores. And as I told my new assistant, Larry, I was feeling a lot better than I had before takeoff. Oh? How's that, Sergeant? Well, to tell you the truth, when you told me you were fresh out of school, I figured I'd have my hands full with you. But the way you went about loading that upper deck, like someone who's had plenty of experience. Tell me, did you ever do that kind of work before you enlisted? Oh, uh, no. No, I didn't. No? Uh, I spent four years in college before I enlisted. Oh, yeah? How come you didn't try for the cadets? I had my reasons. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Guess I shouldn't have asked. Okay, Larry, let's go over this unloading procedure. From then on, what Larry had done before he joined up was a closed subject as far as I was concerned. If that was the way he wanted it, it was okay with me. As long as he did his work, there was nothing more I could ask for. During the four round trips we made to England and back the next six weeks, we had a lot to keep us busy. But in the end, it was worth all our effort, as we found out from our squadron commander. Men... I called you together to let you know that the final figures on Operation Redhead have come down from headquarters. I'll have them posted on the board, and you can all take a look at them. The results show it was a success. We've proven that it's feasible to resupply an overseas unit entirely by air in the event of an enemy attack, an important part of our tactical air command mission. My personal congratulations for a fine job. Yes, it had been a fine job. But a strenuous one. So that evening, our crew decided to relax a little in the NCO club. Boy, you sure surprised me, Larry. When you first joined the crew, I never thought I'd be seeing you cutting up like this. Oh, what made you think that? Well, you were so quiet and serious, Sam. Yeah, you hardly ever opened up. Well, it takes time, Judson, to get to know a guy and for him to get to know us. Hey, speaking of that, I've been meaning to tell you this, Larry, but uh, I've had a feeling, I don't know why, that I seem to know you from somewhere. Oh, yeah? Well, I... I guess I look like a lot of people. Your face or your name, there's something about you that rings a bell. Well, Stewart's a pretty common name. Yeah, that's right, I know, but... Say, excuse me, are any of you airmen second class, Larry Stewart? Yeah, I am. Well, I'm the club manager. There's a long-distance call from Mr. Robert Stewart for you in my office. Oh. Yeah, okay, I'm coming. Well, right this way, huh? Robert Stewart. Robert? Is that what he said? Yeah, I think so, Judson. Why? I'm not sure, but... Hey, hey, where are you going? There's something I want to check. I'll be back. Yes, Roper, I think our ship's improving with time. That last trip, we only had six bad spark plugs out of 224. That was a round trip of 6,000 miles. Well, that's something, all right. I have more wrong in my car when I do that many miles. Oh, here's Larry already. Hey, that was a quick call. Uh, yeah. Is that anything wrong? No, no. Why should there be? Well, I don't know. Just the way you look, is all. Oh, I guess I'm just a natural-born sourpuss. Come on, don't hand me that hey, stuff. Hey, hey, fellas. Hey, fellas, guess what? Huh? Larry's been holding out on us. Yeah, how? I hold here in my hands a copy of a well-known magazine. Oh, come dated on, Judson. We can do without the build-up. All right, all right, okay. Now, take a look at this picture. Now, let me see. Huh, in attendance at the All-Star Game was another big league baseball manager, Bob Stewart, photographed above in the box seats with his son, Larry Stewart. Larry Stewart? Hey, well, it's you. Hey, 
Hey, where'd he go? Went out the door as soon as he saw the picture. But what'd he do that for? Imagine it, a big league manager's son and our crew. I wonder why he never told us. Well, that's a good question, Judson, but uh, I wouldn't ask him if I were you. Well, why not? Oh, oh I know he doesn't like to talk about himself much, but, but this makes it different. He's a public figure, at least his old man is. Oh, sir, I got lots to ask him. Well, I tried my best to talk Judson out of it because I'd seen Larry's face when he saw the photograph. Boy, if ever a fellow looked unhappy, he did. And I figured it would be best if Judson wouldn't press the point, but he didn't budge. Next morning at breakfast... Hey, uh, fellas, here he comes. Hi, Larry. Morning, fellas. Hey, Larry, what's this we hear about your father being the Bob Stewart, huh? Yeah, all right, it's true. Come on, give us a lowdown, Larry. Is it true he's going to trade off his top pitcher, Steve Wilson? I don't know. Pass the jam, please. You bet. Jam for Larry down there. Coming up. You, you got enough butter and toast? Uh, more eggs? <sighs> no thanks, Judson. Say, Larry, you think you could have him visit us once and maybe bring some of the team with him? Hey, that's a great idea. But, but there's no one in the league now that can compare with old Bob. Hey, what was it he batted in 1933, Larry? 356? If I remember rightly, he hit 45 home runs that year, didn't he? All during breakfast, they kept peppering him with questions. I couldn't blame him any. It was a question or two I felt like asking him myself, but I didn't. Because even though Larry answered them, I could see he was growing more and more upset until finally... All right, now listen, fellas. Let's just cut it out right here and now. So I am Bob Stewart's son, so let it go at that. If you want to know anything about him, go look in the baseball almanac. I'm not a walking encyclopedia. So do me a favor and lay off, will you? I've had just about all I can take. You're listening to the proudly we held production of Test Drop. And we will return for our second act in just one moment. Many times a man is skilled in a particular job, yet he's unable to find a use for it. Has this happened to you? Are you a service veteran with a service gain skill that's just going to waste? Well, if you are, then you listen to me, because you may be able to put that skill to work as a member of the United States Air Force. The Air Force needs experience and know-how gained in all the armed forces. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, you can put that experience to work in the Air Force and do so at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. You've earned credits toward a valuable retirement income. So protect that initial investment. For full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. When you've been in the Air Force as long as I have and worked side by side with men over long periods of time, you develop a sort of sixth sense when it comes to understanding human relationships. Not that I was trying to be an amateur psychologist or anything like that. Now, I didn't have to be one to know that Larry needed help. He was a young guy with something on his mind, something that wasn't good for him or for us. The next few days, he kept to himself, not taking interest in anything but his work. So when Saturday evening came around, and I happened to see him laying on his cot on my way out. Oh. Hello, Larry. All alone, huh? Yep. Well, Saturday night. You know, everybody's night out. Mm-hmm. Mind if I sit down? No, no. Go ahead, Sergeant. Thanks. No good, Larry. Yeah, I'm beginning to think you're right. Do you like telling me about it? Oh, it's a long story. Not very interesting, I'm afraid. It's all right. I'm not going anywhere in particular. I got plenty of time. Well, I don't quite know how to tell you. Is it about your father? Yeah. What's wrong with him? Nothing. You see, that's just it. There's nothing wrong with my father. It's myself. That's just the trouble. Dad's a great guy. 
too great. Well, how do you mean? Well, he must have been very disappointed in me, but he never showed it. He was a real sport about it. Well, why do you think he was disappointed? Oh, look, Sarge, my father's life is baseball. He eats, sleeps, and dreams it, and I... I can't even tell a curveball from a fast one. I can't help it. I'm just indifferent to it. Look, why don't you try to forget about your father for a while and, and concentrate on being just M and first class Larry Stewart? Oh, Sarge, that's a good one. What do you think I've been trying to do for the last year? But they, they won't let me forget. Oh, I see. It's always been like that, always been the same, all the way through school and now here. He's Bob Stewart's son, not Larry Stewart. No, just Bob Stewart's son. Yeah, yeah, I know. And you thought you could get away from it in the Air Force, huh? Yeah, but that wasn't the only reason. I always did want to fly. Well, why didn't you become a cadet? Oh, because of something my father told me once. He said the best way to learn anything is from the ground up. So I enlisted, figuring in a couple of years I'd be ready to try for my wings. And? Be what I am because of myself. I guess I was hoping for too much. Well, I don't see that, Larry. I happen to know the crew had marked you down in their book as being okay. Before they knew your father. Well, I guess they're pretty well fed up with me now. Not that I blame them. No, I wouldn't say that, Larry. No, I think they're more puzzled than anything else. Look, you just leave it to me and stop worrying about it. Next morning, we had a squadron briefing, and I managed to get the crew together before Larry showed up. So uh, that's why he blew up. Yeah, that's it. Well, how do you like that? Now, you fellas will do him and me a big favor by just forgetting about Bob Stewart. I'm sure you can find some other things to talk about. Sure, Sarge, we will. Hey, there he is now. Hi, Larry. Morning, fellas. I'm not late, am I? Nope, you're right on time. There comes the commander now. Morning, men. Uh, within a week, our squadron will participate in an operation to find out how the C-124 will perform in an airborne assault mission, something quite different from our past missions. And it'll mean a lot of preparation. The operation will be called Test Drop. Well, as the commander said, it was the first time we'd ever been asked to drop paratroopers, and under the pressure of the work, we had little time to think about other things. But on the day before our flight to the staging area, I happened to be in the washroom shaving. Hey, uh, you want to hear something? Uh, as soon as I get the lather out of my ears... Okay, Judson, shoot. Well, I was in the orderly room. The first wanted to see me about my records. Yeah. Well, while I was standing there, who do you think walked in? None other than Bob Stewart. What? Yeah, Larry's old man. He wanted to see the commander, so the first sergeant showed him in. But before the door was closed, I uh, just happened to overhear some of the conversation. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. He said he hadn't been getting any letters lately from Larry, so he came down to visit him. Yeah. Well, what happened then? Somebody see you listening and shut the door? Oh, I had my foot in it. Oh. Seriously, though, I heard him say that Larry seemed down in the dumps and asked the commander if he was due for a leave soon. You know, the way Larry's been, he could sure use one. I wonder if... Look, could... Judson. Yeah. Look, Judson, you can stop wondering. I haven't accumulated enough leave time yet, and even if I had, I wouldn't take it. I'm staying put right where I am, get it? And from now on, please, stop bothering about me. I can take care of myself. <laughs> The next day, we proceeded to Pope Air Force Base in North Carolina. And for the next three weeks, we were almost constantly in commission. The first week, we spent dropping cargo by parachute. Good old 41. You boys are really going to town back there, Rover. Oh, thanks. 40,000 pounds of cargo in 30 seconds. That's shoving it out. Well, uh, when it comes to cargo dropping, we're pretty much at home. But we've got something ahead of us, sir. Well, there shouldn't be much difference between dropping cargo and troops. Well, no, Larry... Except you're dealing with human beings and not boxes. Oh, we'll do all right. Come on, let's go over to our operations, Larry. A few things I want to check in. I'll see you later, Haley. Well, Larry, how are you feeling by now? Oh, Sarge, I'm fine. It's just what the doctor ordered. 
Uh, I'm glad to hear it. And maybe it's because we've been so busy lately, but the fellas haven't mentioned my dad once to me. Well, what if they do? Are you going to blow your top again like you did with Judson? Listen, Larry, you're a good flight attendant. When it comes to work, you're really put out. But I'm not so sure you're putting out when it comes to crew spirit. Sarge, how can you say that? I've always been 100% for the fellas, except... Yeah, yeah, that's right, except... There's one thing you'll have to get into your head, Larry. It's this. You can't expect a group of men to learn to live with you. You've got to learn to live with them. And during the days that followed, we entered into the paratroop dropping phase of Operation Test Drop, and our ship did all right. Then one afternoon, our squadron was called in for a general briefing on our last exercise. Now, tomorrow, nine ships from our squadron will take part in an exercise to determine the maximum number of troops that can be dropped within a small area in the minimum amount of time. This will be the climax of Operation Test Drop, and a fitting one. Now, these are the ships that will take part. 55. Naturally, good old 41 was first to be called. Next morning, 112 paratroopers with their equipment Filed up our ship's nose ramp. All right, men. Up this ladder to the upper flight deck. This way. In a few minutes, we were airborne. And on our way to the drop zone. Larry and I passed around among the men, pouring coffee for them. Thanks, Sarge. This sure hits the spot. Ah, glad to help. I'm all finished with my men, Sergeant. Yes, yeah, so am I. Uh, Larry, what do you say we have some ourselves, huh? Yeah, I could go for a cup. Here you are. Thanks. Well, this is going to be some drop. We've only got a tolerance of 350 yards for our drop zone. Hmm. For you. Well, what is it, Larry? That guy sitting there. Yeah, what about him? Not drinking his coffee. Just sits and stares at it. Well, maybe he doesn't like our cooking. Yeah, I wonder. I think I'll have a talk with him. Hey, fella. Yeah? Something wrong with the coffee? I don't know. I... I guess I just don't feel like it. Huh. What's the matter? You sick? No. Anything I can do for you? No, 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 thanks. I'm the only one that can. That's a trouble. What trouble? The jump? No. Jump plenty of times. Thought I was an old hand. It's funny, isn't it? A little thing can throw you. Well, it... It happens sometimes. I was doing fine up until the day before yesterday. And now? Well, the other day, when I jumped, I pulled the wrong lines. Almost ended up a thousand yards away from the drop zone. Well, did you... No, mess up the jump. No. Somehow, I, I managed to get straightened out and just about made it, but... Today, so many jumpers going out all at once. I don't know. Well, you shouldn't let it worry you. Anybody can make a mistake. Yeah, that's the trouble. Anybody. You think you know something. You can do it even in your sleep, even. Then, bang, it's all gone. You're right back where you started. No, no, you see, I think that's the wrong way to look at it. You did get straightened out on that last jump. And you should try to forget about it. It's now that you're making the big mistake. What do you mean, mistake? I haven't even jumped yet. I'm not talking about that. The way you feel... You're losing confidence in yourself. And when that happens, you're going to keep on making mistakes. Bigger and bigger each time. I've been listening to this conversation because it interested me in more ways than one. But just about then, we were notified that we were approaching the drop zone. All right, men. When the red light goes on, that means it'll be ten seconds till jump time. I'll count them off. Jump master, stand by. Warning light. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Go! Quickly, smoothly, the men peeled off through the doors until the sky was filled with the mushrooms of their shoots. 
One of the last men out was the one Larry had been talking to. As he drew near to the door, I happened to see him turn around and throw a high sign to Larry. Then, while our ship circled the area... And... Look, Sergeant. They all dropped in the zone, every one. Yeah, so I see. And Sarge... Huh? There's something else that's been dropped, too. What's that, Larry? I'll tell you at the debriefing. And so that's the way it was, Sergeant Roper. When I talked to that jumper about self-confidence, I sort of realized I was talking to myself, too. When he landed safely, I felt as if a, a load had dropped from my own back. It's funny how you get to see things suddenly. Almost as if other people were mirrors. This isn't going to bother me anymore, Sarge. That's the spirit, Larry. From now on, things are going to be different. There's room in this world for both Bob and Larry Stewart. All right, men. Give me your attention. Now, before we go into the debriefing, I want to tell you that our squadron dropped 1,008 parrot jumpers in less than one minute. The most men in the shortest time ever. The Air Force now knows that the C-124 Globemaster is ideally suited for airborne assault as well as regular transport missions. <laughs> yes, Operation Test Drop two years ago was a successful test. In more ways than one. The final result of it, though, should be coming into sight any minute now as I sit here in old 41. Yeah, there it is. The Super Saber Jet Formation. On the way to the flyby over the all-star baseball game crowd as they salute the Air Force. And while I watch, one of the jets dips his wings to us. A salute to an old friend from an old friend. Now, Lieutenant Larry Stewart. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and at higher pay than you may realize. Right now, the Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills, skills required to keep America's air defense strong. So for full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask him for the folder for prior servicemen. You'll see how you can put your service gain skills to work to your best advantage. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. And this is Dick Herbert speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>